basically go over um, uh, uh, for, for really the new traders and newer traders in here. And um, I just want to explain maybe certain things. So general trading rules, and this, it, this doesn't matter whether you're trading you're supply and demand, daily supply and demand zones, whether you're trading stop hunts or whether you're trading capture pain relief, right? There are certain things that you must um, adhere to or you should adhere to, right? And number one is obviously use the daily time frame for, for perspective when entering on lower time frame. So you can avoid buying or going long at highs and selling or going short at lows. And I, I can't remember who, who did this, but it was, I think it was someone over the weekend that I think was buying the Euro CAD. Yeah. Uh, sorry, buying the CAD pretty much at a, a, at a low. And I think they were asking about CPRs or something like that. I didn't know what a CPR was. I don't know, I remember who it was, but they literally bought the CAD and entered here. Right, so entry to go short at the low, and that's not the way that we trade. Right, that's not we're not trying to short here. If you understand, we have to look for pullbacks, that is where the discount is, that's where the bargains are. It's on the pullback, it's not here. Don't, don't FOMO in, don't be the breakout trader, don't be that guy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If, if we're, 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 we are retracement traders, um, you know, and, and level traders, we are, that's what we do, but only when we know we have an advantage over other retracement and level traders. But one thing we're definitely not in no, um, um, uh, under no circumstances are we breakout traders. Yeah. And one thing we should never do as well is buy at highs and selling at lows. This is the equivalent of buying at an absolute high. Whoever the trader was basically bought at the absolute high. And that's what that's not what you want to do. You always want to look for, you know, where you are on the daily time frame chart. Yeah. And avoid doing that. Yeah. So obviously, number two is buying at lows and and selling at highs present the best risk reward trading opportunities, as we know, right? Or we should know. Um, and trade should be taken around the highs and lows of developing or established ranges. So what I mean by that is this. Yeah, is uh, one second. I don't know Oh, let's do another page, right? Um, at some point, there's going to be a range established, right? Let's say, for example, we're in a trending market. Now, a range can either be established from a previous uh, resistance potential turn support, right? Right, can start to go like that and start to range from there. Of course, we're not looking to take that because we understand where an expensive and where the bargain area is, right? So that's expensive potentially. If it can't go any higher than it is expensive. That's the bargain price. But a range can be established from here, right? It can be, and, it's, and it does get established from there all the time. Or here, which is basically our preference, yeah? But either way you look at it, yeah, we're looking to buy at the lows, buy after an, a range is, is, is attempting to be established but you have to sometimes you have to let the range set yeah so you have to let the range set so if we see something like that then we understand that potentially that's where the range is going to set we might take a trade here cool if it works brilliant but then the range starts to become clearer as you start to come down right that's basically what it is or if you sometimes you might see something like this and then you might see you know prices come back down and automatically that potentially is the first sign of a potential ranging market where you're buying low right this is where the low price is because this is ultimately proof of value right the market went you know two three hundred pips up from here the market established where the value was and this is where we potentially may get and start to Establish where the, where another bargain is, and this is where the range may start to may start to uh, um, uh, establish itself from. Right, so you want to always look to buy low 
or you know anticipate where the range may be yeah number three is enter a maximum of two uh, trade positions on a single currency um for example if i have or say you but um if you have an if you have open trades on the euro dollar and the dollar cad yeah so if you're basically trading two dollar pairs or you're, you're in two um uh, pairs that consist of a dollar currency or, do, uh, yeah, or sorry of the dollar currency i would probably advise for now yeah until you get more advanced about um trading and you'll get more confident um don't take another dollar trade yeah unless you are at break even or at least on at least one of your open trades meaning that if you're if you've got um a floating or an open uh trade and basically your your you haven't got yourself to any kind of break even or profitability on either of these trades. So they're both open, but if they lost, then or if you got if your stop loss got triggered and you know you would end up losing the full amount, let's say you risked, I don't know, 1% on that one, 1% on that one, um, and you lost 2%. If you got if your stop loss has got triggered on both of these pairs, then just don't take the trade. Let's say, for example, you enter into you know you're in two positions, but there's no way that you can lose, for example, on the dollar cad, right? Because maybe you know you've you've taken partial profits, got yourself to break even, or you're in a in a winning position on that currency pair. Your risk is off the table. Yeah, no worries, Lawrence. Take it easy. Yeah, your risk is off the table right so you haven't got one percent in the market anymore yeah you're now at profitability if this trade can lose you one percent then fine or whatever your risk amount is then fine then you maybe you can if you want to then add another dollar position right or do a dollar currency so that you're not top heavy you know in the dollar just in case prices do go against you yeah so ensure that you're managing your risk two at the absolute maximum three only if one of these pairs um you know you're in a profitable or break-even position risk a maximum of 0 0.5 per trade and that trade should be divided into two to three positions ultimately i would say probably just do 0 0.1 percent per position which would be really a maximum of 0. Um, uh, three percent. But if you get a bit more advanced and get a bit more comfortable and profitable, then you can do what I do, which is basically just you know get heavier as uh, you know your your free positions uh, get filled. Right? I went over that earlier. Um, only take trade setups you're interested in if it looks like the trade setup template charts uh, that with that are in basically the templates channel. Yeah. So again, I've showed you the templates channel. If you're saying that you know you think that there's a stop hunt somewhere or CPR uh, trade set up somewhere, right? And you're thinking whether whether it is or it isn't, yeah. And then you you message me at like two in the morning, but in your time zone it's like nine in the morning or whatever it is, and you know that I'm sleeping potentially, and you're thinking I really want to take this trade. Just look at the templates channel, <laughs> yeah. Does you, does your setup look like anything in the templates channel? If you're struggling and you can't see the template in your chart on your screen do not take that trade because it's not an a1 trade setup yeah do not take that trade only take trades if they are um if it looks like the trade setups that 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 we take to trade right be consistent with your time frames you look at be consistent with the time frames sorry you you, you look to enter so if i think one of the one uh, one of the big things that traders do is they bounce around time frames yeah how many of us or how many of you have bounced around from time frame to time frame to time frame to time frame Going from the five minutes to the one minute to the five minutes to the 10 minute to the 15 minute to one hour to the four hour you have to try and establish trading i think personally should really kind of revolve around your your life as far as if you have a job or you have children or when whether you whether you're able to look at a a, a, a chart you know a certain amount of times a day that should dictate what you know the time frames that you should potentially trade there's no point in trying to be look at the 15 minute chart if um you can't you know uh, be around every 15 minutes to see what candlestick formation is you know uh, um uh forming 
take a potential entry and have the time to take the actual trade entry, right? Because taking it takes time to to, to to trade a position, right? You've got to calculate your, your lot size, et cetera, depending on, you know, your brokers or what um, indicators you use, risk management tools you use. So it takes time, right? And what you don't want to be is flustered in a trade, you know what I mean, trying to do this. And then, you know, you're, you've got, you know, 101 things to do. Do you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't make any sense. So if you can enter, if you can afford to take, you know, uh, the four hour charts or the six hour or the eight hour or whatever it is, like trade those time frames. be consistent. Don't start going down to time frames just because you can get a bit better risk reward. Um, but remember that because you can get a better risk reward doesn't mean that the lower the time, the lower time frames are more reliable because ultimately how much supply or demand do you want to see before you are confident in that trade? A one hour time frame just tells you that there was one hour's what what one hour's worth of supply of demand was in that was in that time frame, right? Four hours is going to be more reliable than one hour. You know, a daily pin bar is not the same as a as a five minute pin bar. It doesn't give you the same information. It might be the same formation, but it's not giving you the same information, not by a long shot. So, you know, um, be consistent in the time frames and also be consistent with with your entry triggers, meaning that. Um, I'm not saying that you, if you trade candlesticks and look at candlesticks that you can't do pending orders, for example, or vice versa. Of course you can, you can mix it up, but just be more consistent with one than the other. Yeah. Otherwise you're going to end up just confusing yourself and convincing yourself that, um, you know, the trade that you lost was because you entered into, um, a pending order rather than waiting for a candlestick or because, you know, you could have got a better entry using a pending order rather than waiting for the candlestick entry, right? It, it, they both have their pros and cons. Both have their pros and cons and you have to be comfortable with those pros and cons, right? There's going to be times where someone who took a pending order, got a great entry, got a great exit, yeah, and they won the trade. There's going to be times where I wait for a candlestick and I get, you know, maybe, you know, a later entry and then because of where I place my stop loss, I might even lose that trade, right? None of us are going to enter into the exact same, you know, positions at the exact same time on the exact same time frames all the time. And it's remember, it's not about the entries, right? The entry is not the reason why your trade, your trading over the long term is going to work out. It has nothing to do with it. The retail space, they get so obsessed with entries. You know, that's the number one question I get I get asked. I need to know how to enter. It's like, that's not the reason. Like picking a great level, picking the right fundamentals, understanding where you are from a value perspective, all of that comes first. The entry is just then, you know what? I've spotted this zone. This is the CPR. This is where the stop hunt is. This is why I'm anticipating it. Do I see this setup? Yep, yeah. boom, take it. Do I see the entry trigger? Yep, yeah, take it. That's all it is. If you don't see the entry trigger, then you don't take it. That's it. But be consistent. Number eight is have predetermined profit targets. And I think I spoke about this. I think it was a uh, Dr. Ninja uh, that was asking about this on the pound, on the pound dollar. We were talking about that. I made a video earlier, I think yesterday, sorry, I said earlier this week, but I made it yesterday um, regarding um, uh, the, uh, the pound and potentially where to take, you know, certain profits. But ultimately, you want to look to take profits partial or full, yeah, or full profits just before obvious price rejection areas. And the reason why I say that is because you want to, you know, uh, avoid um, what's known as a crowded exit, yeah? So we know, for example, let's say I'm, I'm going to draw out, like, you know, the pound, right? What happened with the pound, right? So the pound right now is there. I think there might be something like that, right? I think there's a level there. Now, I think Dr. Ninja ended, ended somewhere up here. I don't know where his stop loss was, but he's got some good risk reward before you get down to you know, around a 50% level. But what, what ultimately you want to do is if you know that this area here, you know, is, is a level of support and resistance, try and take profit maybe just before you get there, right? And just before, again, is a, is a subjective term. I can't tell you whether it's like five pips or 10 pips or 20 pips, no idea. But in and around that area, 
right, is where you want to look. Is 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 one way to look um, uh, for to take profits, right? Because you understand that if that level's been traded, right, that level's been traded several times, then it's probably going to be an area where price is going to react to. Yeah, so that's you know just one um, you know uh, uh, profit target um, uh, setup, I guess. I say set up, but more of a profit target um, or a profit target that you can do, right? Or, or, or look towards. It's a major, you know, obvious price uh, rejection areas, a major supply and demand zones, for example, that have worked in the past and support and resistance levels. Round numbers is a good one as well, in conjunction with, you know, um, support and resistance or supply and demand zones, um, or what we use, which is our take profit uh, tool, uh, FIB tool, which is again, 50 or 80 percent of the range again just just understanding you know if you watch that video i, I kind of explain it but 80 percent of the range you really want to start to look potentially because prices there's going to be people trying to get out right who nobody wants to it will say nobody but you know you might be left holding the bag if you've gone short here and then you're waiting for the absolute low prices may never reach that low yeah and Lots of traders might be exiting in and around that area, as well as remember other traders looking to buy in that zone. Yeah. So the closer we get to wherever this is a bargain area or take profit area or expensive, prices may never reach there. And like I said, you don't want to be the last person holding the bag. You want to be don't want to be the one that says, oh, you know, I'm going to hold for this. And then all of a sudden prices start to retrace back and then reverse on you. And you could have taken profit somewhere around here. So me generally, I would say the 80 percent area. Is, is, is a definitely a profit target. And you can always leave a small position on a partial position, take 80% off, 90% off, whatever it is, and leave a small position just in case prices do continue to go to the downside, right? If you want to, you don't have to, it's up to you. But ultimately that's, you know, um, where you wanna look for um, some potential um, profit targets. But there's a mixture, I guess, of, of those, but, kind of predetermine, right, before you get into the trade um, where it is that you want to take profit rather than just entering a trade and then saying, oh, where where, where, where should I take profits after you're already in it? It should really be planned out, you know, in advance so that you're not being potentially subjective and you can kind of stick to some rules, you know what I mean? Um, and nine, only take trades uh, that have at least a better than a one to one risk reward ratio. And I see, and I said C number eight. And the reason why I say C number eight is because, and I mentioned it earlier today, if you have, if you, if you're, if you have a, an area, right? Let's say, for example, I don't know, you have, da, 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 and let's say that's an area that you want to look for. Sorry, this, this is an area where you want to look for um, a trade, right? This area right here. Now, if, for example, you get a candlestick, nice, you know, candlestick here, then some sort of pin bar, and this is your risk. Now, if this is the most expensive area, is your reward worth the risk? That's the risk, that's the reward. Is that worth it? If it's not a one-to-one -one or more than a one-to-one. -one. And even if, even if it's a one-to-one, -one, I don't like one-to-one -one trades, not at all. I don't take really one-to-one -one trades, yeah? For me, it's got to be better than a one-to-one -one trade. For me, it's got to be at least a two-to-one or two-to-one -one reward risk ratio, but um, at, a, at an absolute minimum. But the point being is that wherever you place your risk and what your reward to the upside is, if that's an area of, of rejection that's been rejected several times in the past, yeah? Chances are it may get rejected there. And even if it doesn't, cool. But the point is, is that you want to... Um, understand where traders are potentially taking profit where you know there's going to be lots of liquidity around here and um whether you've got lots of upside potential and also as well it goes back to number one because again if this for example price has been trending you don't want to look for trades around expensive areas because highs are expensive areas right you want to maybe wait for a bit more of a pullback down to better demand zone around there and that will give you for example better oh what happened there sorry guys oh there we go yeah that might give you 
better risk reward, right? There's your risk. And then maybe that's your reward, yeah? So again, it comes back to location and um, you know your, your, your risk reward and what you're, um, what you're willing to take. But again, you have to establish your profit targets first before you can even think about you know, where your risk reward and measuring your risk reward. And finally, this is just, I uh, guess, not necessarily a rule, but more a more of a, um, uh, I guess, an understanding of how the pros and cons of, you know, uh, placing your stop losses or where to place your stop loss, right? So tight stop losses represent better risk reward potential, as we know, as to the allure of going down to five minute time frames and getting you know having you know 10 pip trades and potentially making 100 pip to the upside right but stops are more likely to be triggered as we know because um of the you know the nature of uh of, of short-term time frames that you know algos etc right um whereas wider stops yeah uh stop losses won't give you as good risk reward as tight stops of course but stops are less likely to be triggered in comparison to tight stops. The thing is, there is no right or wrong. Yeah, there is no best or worst. Yeah, you have to understand. It's like it's it's you have to understand the, the upsides and the downsides to 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 trading. There's always a trade off in trading. Yeah, if there wasn't a trade off, then that would be a massive edge, right? We would pretty much just again put everything we had into those trades. And then we'd be, you know, trillionaires if there was no downside. There's always going to be a downside to the trades because this is a probabilistic game. We just need the probabilities on our side. But there's no right or wrong, only pros and cons when it comes to tight stop losses and, you know, wider stop losses. I say this to, to, to traders that I don't mind having a 10, 15 pip stop, 20 pip stop, right? Some traders will say, well, I want a wider stop. Fine. I'm prepared to enter a trade multiple times. If I lose on the first trade and the second trade and the third trade, I understand the, the downside to having a tighter stop. Yeah. But some people just don't maybe might not want to, you know, enter two, three, four, five times on a trade. Right. And if that's the case, then just have a wider stop. But you have to understand the downside to the wider stop, which is basically you might get stopped out less but you're going to have not as good risk reward. Yeah. So, so that's just what it is. Yeah. There's no way around it. And as long as you understand these things, I'm try I was trying to think of anything else, but I think if you understand these things and just apply this to your trading, to, to, to our trading and in whatever you do, I think this should be a great foundation. You know what I mean? It should be a really good foundation to all the strategies that we do take. CPR, stop hunts, you know, daily supply and demand.